In this video, I'm going to talk about the evolution of the Porsche 944 values over the past couple decades and where I think they're heading in the future. I've been asked a few times whether or not I think the value of the 944 series will significantly increase over time, and there are a number of automotive journalists and enthusiasts who have entertained the same question in recent times. So as an active owner and community member, I thought I'd share my thoughts based upon my personal experiences and what I see happening in the market today. To speculate on where 944 values are going, let's start with where the 944 began. When the 944 was introduced in the early 1980s, pricing for the naturally aspirated base model was right around $20,000, and that eventually grew closer to $30,000 as the years went on, with the turbo and the S model cars falling between $35,000 and $45,000 at the time, which in many cases was more expensive than their closest segment rivals in the Mazda RX-7, the Z cars, and others of the era by more than $10,000. By the mid-1990s, many of the 160,000 units Porsche had produced were starting to age mechanically, they were now out of warranty, and as maintenance costs were increasing, we saw a large volume of 944s come available on the used car market for relative bargains compared to their new car values, and it wasn't uncommon to find a decent running example in the $2,000 to $3,000 range into the late 90s and the early 2000s. The problem here was they were affordable to buy, but they were still not affordable to maintain given their Porsche heritage, and so people would drive them until they slowly developed a list of issues that was too long and too expensive to address, until they were eventually scrapped or left to waste away in people's yards or driveways for the years to come. Because this value to repair cost disparity, many of the 944s involved in accidents during this time were immediately salvaged out by the insurance companies. Other examples were converted to track cars, and they were generally consumed until the nicer, cleaner running examples were far less common. And so around 2015, the 944 market began to see a small increase in value as supplies began to taper off. And sure, you could still find a parts car or a non-running example for around $1,000, but the decent-looking running cars started to move into the $5,000 to $10,000 range, and that trend slowly continued into today. Here's a look at the Porsche 944 sales history on Bring a Trailer's website dating back to 2015. And obviously the condition of the cars brought to market here will be a little different from those sold on eBay and Craigslist, but you can see the trending in the market. And if we look at the sales from 2016 to 2018, many of them are right around that $10,000 to $12,000 range, with a few as low as $5,000 and some touching the $20,000 mark. But as we get to 2020, we see the majority of the data points shifting up to the $15,000 to $20,000 range. There are a few outliers in the very low mileage segment, like this 2,500 mile NA that sold for $66,000 in March of 22, and a 2,000 mile S2 that went for $67,000 in September of 2020, with a few other S2s and S2 cabriolets in the $40,000 area. When we look at just the 944 turbo sales history, we do see a similar increase taking place right around 2020, with most of these examples falling in the $20,000 to $30,000 range. There are a couple of outstanding sales here in the $80,000 area, again, those low mile cars, and amazingly, a 3,100 mile 1989 turbo that sold for $135,000 in January of 2022. The turbo cars obviously having more power and being produced in fewer quantities than the NA cars accounts for this price gap in most cases, but I think there are a few environmental factors contributing to the general increases in the last three years. The first of which is that the supply of quality examples has really started to decrease and I'm seeing fewer and fewer nice, well-sorted 944s coming to market this year alone. Of course, the COVID-19 pandemic had an impact on all of the used car values over the past couple years. So there's a bit of that at play, but the third piece, I think, is due to the tremendous price surge in the air-cooled 911 market. Now, granted, the 911 is a very different car from the 944, but both maintain the Porsche badge, and any time a product attracts prestige and value to the brand, there's some pull-through association to other products by the same manufacturer. So that explains a bit about the 944 market today and how we got here, but where do I think it will go? I really think the 944 market is going to see some steady increases over the next 10 years. I don't think it will explode like the 911 market. That car is much more iconic to Porsche. It's their flagship, and the 944 is more iconic to an era that's come to pass. But I do believe we'll see some additional value in the 944, and here's why. The 944 has a few things going for it that still attract potential buyers and collectors. For one, the design is timeless, and it really looks nothing like any of the other cars on the road today. It's got the classic 80s box fender flares, the pop-up headlights. It offers decent power, great handling and they can be quite reliable cars once they're well sorted out. 
The second is the community of support and parts availability. The 944 community is incredibly welcoming and supportive of new 944 owners. And there are ample OEM and aftermarket parts available, even now 40 years after the car was introduced. And there are a lot of online resources available for people looking to do their own mechanical work. And all those elements, I think, provide a strong enthusiast backing. The third consideration is the value increases we've already seen today, as the 944 is approaching a space where people can justify taking on a project car and investing another $5,000 to $10,000 in restoration work to care for a backlog of deferred maintenance and not end up completely upside down in value. And I think that will only improve as the 944s start to die off, and there are fewer and fewer nice examples available on the market. Balancing that equation will probably be easier for all of the DIY mechanics out there, but I don't think we're far from a point where we'll see some more full restorations being performed on some of the rare 944 models. And you may be thinking, well, you're a 944 owner, so obviously you'd like to see the prices increase, but that's really only half true. Yes, I do think that would be great for a larger audience to better appreciate the 944 and see it for the decades-long engineering effort it embodies from Porsche, but there's also a big part of me that really wants it to remain as an affordable entry point for new enthusiasts to have a Porsche car experience of their own, one that many of us wouldn't be able to afford otherwise. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the 944 and where the market will go in the future. Let me know what you think will happen, and feel free to share your 944 experiences in the comments.